What is going on guys, DBG here, in this video we are going to be doing a gameplay with the Pink Diamond Xavier McDaniel. So this is one of the new Evo cards that have just come out, and it is the first card you are going to be able, well, you can Evo up to a Pink Diamond after purchasing. So definitely, definitely a card that a lot of people are going to be looking to pick up. So this is probably the first Xavier McDaniel video because I found one of them on the auction house. <laughs> I don't know how people have grinded up in a day, but luckily enough, I managed to pick one up. So, he's got, well, he needs to score 1,500 points, make 100 dunks, play 50 games, just to get him up to a diamond. And then I'm pretty sure to get him up to a pink diamond, you have to play 100 games. So, whoever you got him up, he's playing a lot of games. So, we got three Hall of Fame badges, Showtime, Cross Key Score, and Pogo Stick. He's got 28 gold badges, Randis Finisher, Putback, Boss, Lab City Finisher, Pick Dodger, Pick... Um, pocket, he's got chase scenarios, clamps, hard crusher, interceptor, off ball pest, he's got quick draw, which is massive, trapper, consistent finisher, fancy footwork, giant slayer, 6-9, giant slayer is good, difficult chance, literary finisher, downhill, green machine, hot start, ice in his veins, pump fake maestro, and silver post move lockdown. Stats wise, he's got a good post fadeaway and good post hook, he's got good post moves as well, great mid range shot 92, good three ball of 84, he's a 95 driving dunk, he has got an 80 block, 81 steal, a really good offense, defense, and rebounding. Really good speed, speed, ball, and acceleration. 95 vertical as well. Man, if this guy could be played a point, he would have been a point, cheese a point guard if this was NBA 2K19. But position locks means that he can only play small forward or power forward. And he's not a bad, cheesy primary ball handler at power forward, to be completely honest. So, yeah, this is the team we're going to run with. John Stockton at the 1, Brandon Roy at the 2, Kobe at the 3, McDaniel at the 4, and Smith at the 5, with Marbury, J.R. Smith, Paul Pierce, Jerome Kersey, George Mike, and Sidney Moncrief rounding off the bench. Or Sidney Moncrief, or Charles Brewer, and Leighton rounding off the bench. Also, I am sorry, again, if my voice is not great. I'm actually feeling great. I don't feel like I've been sick for the last week. I don't feel sick at all right now. My voice is just completely gone. I think it's definitely got something to do with me constantly making videos while I was sick and trying to push through it. And now that I'm actually not feeling that sick anymore, my voice is just completely gone. But sure, look, videos don't make themselves. So anyway, now let's go to the hot zones and release for Xavier McDaniel. Then we're going to get on to the game. All right, so Xavier McDaniel has got no hot zones outside the three. He's got hot zones a lot of spots inside the three. That release is money. Oh my gosh, it's the same release as last year, just faster. His release last year I thought was really good. He was like my budget Galaxy Opal, or not Galaxy Opal, my budget Pink Diamond Yanis last year. And he's one of the few players that I used to put guarding Pink Diamond Yanis and they could actually do a job on him. Unfortunately, last year he was able to speed boost this year. He can't even with um, a coach, even with a ball control coach. I'm trying to think, can he? He goes 78. No, he can only go up to 85. That's the max he can go up to because shoes only give plus three in stats this year. Which, to be honest, is a little bit more realistic than the plus 5. And definitely more realistic than the plus 9 from NBA 2K18. But, yeah, so, McDaniel, obviously, really nice release. Going to the basket. He's going to be big. He's got good dunk animations. He's going to be an, an elite defender, whether that's post or um, on the perimeter. He's going to be fast. He's going to be fast with the ball. On the fast break, he's going to be really difficult to stop. And I think he might just be a taller Jerome Percy. Percy's exceptional. Like, absolutely exceptional. But, um... Who knows, McDaniel might be that a little bit better. So anyway, now it's just green one more three. And now let's get on to the game. Okay, so we are playing against Calvin Murphy. What? Oh, his stats are unbelievable, actually. Dale Ellis, Doncic, Sean Kemp, and the Kembe Matumbo. So, Kemp on McDaniel. We definitely have the advantage there. Oh, wow. That was a terrible free throw release. Okay, let's go into our offense, and let's push the floor. Let's get the blow by. He's got downhill right to the basket. He goes coast to coast off the rebound. Xavier McDaniel burns him there. Let's go. That's fine. He's 5'10". He's not getting a shot off over McDaniel. Let's go. No way you can burn him there. Good defense, lads. It's good defense there. It's a great shot we forced him into. Let's push it. Let's push it. You've got downhill. Straight to the basket. Puts up the layup and can't make it. Yeah, no stamina, low stamina there. And low stamina means you basically cannot play in the game this year. It's ridiculous. Oh, snatch back into the jumper. Not a terrible release. Off. All right, I don't think... His release doesn't seem like you're as quick as Jerome Kersey's, though. It doesn't seem as quick, even though... It's a weird one, because without quick draw, it's definitely faster than Kersey's. Ooh, with quick draw, it feels like Kersey's faster. Three. 
That's another really early release. Okay, what's up with that slow release? It wasn't like that in Shoot Around. Maybe it was. I just didn't notice. Alright, it's not been a good start. But sure, look, it is what it is. It'll be grand. No need to worry. It is still early, early days. Okay, that's wide open. That's a little bit better in terms of release, but it still got still is off. Okay, I'm just not used to his release yet. We are shooting 20% from the field with him. He's missed four shots in a row. Like, I'm not worried about losing this game. That's a full white. He banked a corner three! That has to be a joke. That actually has to be a joke. I've never seen someone bank a corner three in this game before. That's on there. There we go. That's a better release. There we go. Good shot there by McDaniel. I'm, I was fairly close to green it right there. His release is obviously a little bit longer than most players at quick draw. Oh, that's a nice Euro. Give credit where credit's due. That was a really nice move by my opponent there. Okay, we got by him. To the basket. Oh, I would have hoped that he dunked with his left hand there, but two hands is fine. Three ball. Decent ish release by Marbury. Tie game. So Cursey, Cursey feels way faster, not gonna lie. He feels, even though his uh, speed stats aren't as good, he feels way, way faster than McDaniel. That is a foul and pop, what? The hacky shack rule where they won free throw? Where did that come from? Okay, we burn him to the basket. Nice layup there by Cursey by Bob McAdoo. McAdoo's a good player. That was a move right there, that's poor defense. Okay, we got lucky there. All right, then 15-14 at the end of the first. All right, like it could be worse. It could be a lot worse. We have yet, we have not yet scored with McDaniel, but, well, we've not yet scored much with McDaniel. We only have seven with him. It's open. That is a full white, and that is good. Toss it up, and we get the dunk there with Xavier McDaniel. Great pass there by John Stockton. Not a good shot. This guy's taking so many bad shots, and it's still a tie. We got a step on him. Pull up from mid, decent release. Get shot there by McDaniel. I've not yet greened one, but he's hit a lot of, like, almost greens. Shooting 6 of 11 from the field. Not too bad. He's gone back. He's gone over 50%, which is good after I think he started off one and uh, one for 6. We burn him. Right to the basket. No way. No way can Pop Cousy stop him there. That is a really good second quarter there from uh, Xavier McDaniel. Gonna give him a bit of rest, so he has stamina anyway. Uh, for the second half. The defense there. Don't rebound ball with your head, uh, Moncrief. When you're a 96 overall, you should know to rebound the ball with your hands. Free, free ball, great. I don't know what I was trying to say there when I went for the snatch back. Okay, we've gone for a kind of fake two for one because this guy plays so fast that I know he's going to give me a two for one. And we get an easy steal there with Jerome Kersey. Gets the dunk on the fast break. Come on. He keeps shooting threes with Kemp. Why is Rick Smith so fast? It's like he's the only center that wasn't affected by them slowing down all the centers. Good finish there on the break by McDaniel. Rick Smith is still super fast. Man, that crossover is slow. Three. Green light. Finally. Finally, we green one there with McDaniel. That's a three-pointer to make this a nine-point game. Daniel's got to step on him right to the basket. Easy dunk. Bad start to the game for him. He has dominated since that first quarter. Okay, just get it to him and ISO. Okay, they're not in a position to guard this. Right to the basket. Easy dunk. Imagine if they gave this card quick first step. That would just be game breaking. Who would have ever thought that right now an argument could be made? In a 2K game, that Xavier McDaniel is the best card in the game. Who would ever... Actually, to be fair, who would have thought that the argument w in 2K19 would have been, is Hito Turkoglu better than Yanis? Or is Kurilenko the best player in the history of 2K? Both answers, yes. <laughs> Obviously not Opal, Yanis, but every Yanis except Opal, Hito was better. Two, green. My God, McDaniel has taken over. He has completely taken over this game. 15 of 20 from the field. He's hit 14 shots in a row. I'm pretty sure he was one for six. 
He was one for five, definitely. He's either hit 14 of 15 shots, or 15 of 16, or 16, 15 shots in a row. This is madness. He has 21 points in the first three minutes of this quarter. Like he's on for like a 30-something point quarter himself. He banked another corner three. Let's go, Kersey. They leave him wide open there from deep. That's another green three from Jerome Kersey. Is now a 20 point game, a 34 point four, 34 point third quarter. And he's gone. There we go. I'm going to quit because he's just going to stall out these last five minutes. So, anyway, that is the video. Xavier McDaniel is without question one of the best cards in the game. A fantastic, fantastic card that is just absolutely incredible. Do I think he's worth the major grind? He's worth it over Kersey, even though, not gonna lie, Kersey might be better. They both do different, well, they both serve different purposes. With the way the meta is, I wouldn't really play the two of them together if the other team wants to run a zone because neither of them have range extender. But his power forwards, because of how bad the power forward position is in general this year, these are probably two of the best players to play a power forward. Obviously, Serge Ibaka is unbelievable. But Xavier McDaniel and Jerome Kersey are both class to play there. Kersey feels faster and shoots the ball a bit better. Xavier McDaniel is probably a bit better at going to the basket. Defends better and rebounds better. Anyway, yep, that is the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.